Okay, so have you ever just like sat in traffic and thought, there's got to be a better way to do this whole city thing? You mean besides just like moving to the woods and living off the grid? Haha, <laughs> well, yeah, that too. But I was thinking more along the lines of, I don't know, a city built from scratch designed to avoid all the problems we see in older cities. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Kind of like a blank slate for open planning. Exactly. And that's actually what's happening right now in Saudi Arabia with this project called Neom. It's making headlines for a <laughs> while now. This super ambitious plan to build a city of the future, basically. Neom. Yeah. Right. I've heard that name floating around. It's huge, isn't it? Like geographically, I mean. Yeah, massive. We're talking bigger than some countries, actually. Yeah. They're projecting a population of millions eventually. Wow. Okay. So this isn't just some small scale experiment. They're really swinging for the fences with this one. But what's the point? Why go through the trouble of building an entirely new city from the ground up in the middle of the desert, no less? Well, that's what makes this whole thing so fascinating. It's not just about building a city. It's about rethinking how we live, how cities can be more sustainable and livable in the face of climate change and all the challenges facing us in the 21st century. Okay. So kind of a testing ground for new ideas and technologies. Precisely. And one of the core ideas behind Neom is this focus on sustainability. They're aiming to make it a completely carbon neutral city, powered entirely by renewable energy sources. Ambitious, to say the least. But how do they plan to pull that off? Well, that's where things get really interesting. A big piece of the Neom project is something called the line. Have you heard of this? The line? Yeah, that rings a bell. It's, uh, it's not a traditional city, right? More like a... It's unlike anything we've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. Picture this. A 170-kilometer-long, super-high-tech skyscraper, but only 200 meters wide. Hold on. 170 kilometers long. That's yeah. that's longer than some countries. And you said just 200 meters wide. How do you even... How does that even work? Right. It's hard to even wrap your head around. And that's just the beginning. We're talking no cars, vertical farms, AI managing everything. Okay, whoa, oh, slow down. This is a lot to unpack. Let's start with... Yeah, I mean, wh where do you even begin with something like this? 170 kilometers of skyscraper. How does that even make sense architecturally? So I've seen some of the renderings, mm -hmm. and it's pretty wild. They're going for this mirrored facade that basically reflects the desert landscape. So, like, you wouldn't even see the building itself from a distance. It would just kind of blend in. That's the idea, yeah. Yeah. They're calling it a zero-gravity urbanism. Basically, everything is built vertically to minimize the footprint on the land. Okay, I'm starting to get the picture, but... Help me understand the logistics of it all. You've got homes, businesses, parks, all stacked on top of each other. Exactly. It's like a self-contained city within a giant mirrored skyscraper. Yeah. And get this. They're saying you'll be able to access everything you need within a five-minute walk. Five minutes. Seriously. Okay, so... What happens when you need to go further, like from one end of this massive structure to the other? Ah, uh, well, they've got that covered too. Remember how I said no cars? Yeah, that stuck with me. Hard to imagine a city without any cars. Well, get ready for this. They're building this super high-tech transportation system underneath the line. It's all underground and AI-powered, of course. Underground, huh? So like a subway system, but Ugh. fancier. Way fancier. Think high-speed rail that can get you from one end of the line to the other in 20 minutes, no matter the distance. 20 minutes for 170 kilometers. Okay, that's impressive. Are we talking bullet trains here? It sounds like it's even more advanced than that. Some articles I read mentioned magnetic levitation. No way. Like maglev trains? That's next level stuff. Right. And for those shorter trips within the line, they're going to have autonomous pods. Autonomous pods. So like self-driving things, but smaller, like those little delivery robots you see sometimes. Yeah, something like that, but probably a bit bigger. Designed to carry people. And it's all managed by AI, optimizing route, managing traffic flow in real time. So theoretically, no traffic jams, no waiting for rides. In theory, that's the dream, yeah. Wow. It's definitely a whole new vision of city living. But what about the more, I don't know, mundane aspects of life? Like where does the food come from in this super city? Do they have to truck it all in? That's the cool part they've thought about that, too. They're going big on something called vertical farming. Vertical farming. Okay, I'm not going to lie. That one kind of went over my head. What is that exactly? So imagine skyscrapers, but instead of offices or apartments, they're filled with crops, like floor to ceiling. Wait, hold on. Skyscrapers full of lettuce and tomatoes, like growing inside? You got it. They use LED lights to mimic sunlight and these hydroponic or aeroponic systems instead of soil. Hydro, what the, okay, you're losing me again. Uh-huh, sorry. <laughs> Basically, it means they grow the plants without soil, 
using nutrient-rich water instead. Huh, interesting. But what's the advantage of doing all that? Sounds complicated. Well, for one thing, it's way more efficient in terms of space. You can grow a lot more food in a vertical farm compared to traditional farming. Plus, they're not as dependent on weather conditions and seasons since it's all indoors. Ah, okay, that makes sense, especially in the middle of the desert where it's not like you can just, you know, plant a field of corn outside. Exactly, and they're talking about using AI to manage the whole system, monitoring plant health, adjusting light and nutrients for each crop, that kind of thing. So like high-tech greenhouses, but on a massive scale. Yep, pretty much. And get this, it's not just leafy greens either. They're also looking at ways to reduce reliance on traditional meat production. Oh, how do they plan on doing that? They're exploring all sorts of alternative protein sources, things that are more sustainable and efficient to produce. Like what? Give me some examples. What are people going to be eating in this Neom place? Well, they're talking about lab-grown meat, for one. Lab-grown meat? Like meat grown in a lab? Yeah, it's a real thing. They take animal cells and cultivate them in a lab setting to produce meat that's, well, essentially identical to the real deal, but without the environmental impact of traditional livestock farming. Huh. I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. But I guess it makes sense if they're going for maximum sustainability. What else? What else are they putting on the menu? Well, I've heard them mention things like insect protein. Bugs. Yeah, like crickets and mealworms. Apparently, they're a really good source of protein and much more sustainable to raise than cattle or pigs. Okay, now you're just messing with me. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. There are already companies making things like cricket flour and cricket bars. It's supposed to be pretty tasty. Okay, you know what? Maybe we should table the food discussion for now. I need a minute to process all this. We're talking flying trains, skyscrapers full of vegetables, and bug burgers. This neon place is like something out of a sci-fi movie. That's what I've been saying. It's easy to get caught up in the what-ifs and the potential downsides. And believe me, we'll get to those. But for now, I have to admit, I'm intrigued. This whole thing is just mind-blowing. So, yeah, it's a lot to take in. But hey, at least we're not talking about eating bugs this time. Hey, don't knock it till you try it right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but seriously, there's more to this whole Neom thing than just the futuristic buildings and uh, unusual food choices. Right. They kind of left off talking about vertical farming. Which, yeah, still sounds kind of wild to me. But I guess it's all part of their goal of creating a completely sustainable city. Exactly. And it's not just about the environment either. They're also looking at how to make life inside Neom healthier, more convenient, more, well, Futuristic, I guess. Okay, I'm listening. How are they planning to do that? What's on the agenda for Neom Healthcare? Well, think about all the ways AI and technology could potentially be used to improve our health. That's kind of the direction they're going in. Like, what? give me an example. So imagine a healthcare system where everyone is wearing like a smartwatch or some kind of biometric sensor. Okay, sure, that tracks. Literally. Lots of people already do that. But what's so special about it in Neom? Well, in Neom, all that data from these wearables is constantly being analyzed by AI, yes. looking for patterns, predicting potential health issues. You mean like before you even get sick? Exactly. The idea is to shift from reactive health care, where you go to the doctor when you're already feeling lousy, mm -hmm. to a more proactive approach where potential problems are identified and addressed before they even develop. Hmm. That's kind of amazing when you think about it. But also a little creepy, no? I mean, all that data about your body, your health, mm. who has access to that? Yeah, that's a valid concern for sure. And it's something that comes up again and again when we talk about these super high-tech cities of the future. It's like, what are the trade-offs? How much privacy and autonomy are we willing to give up in exchange for convenience, efficiency, and maybe even a healthier life? It's a big question. And to be honest, I don't think there are any easy answers. But it's definitely something we need to be thinking about, especially with projects like Neom that are pushing the boundaries of what technology can do. Absolutely. Yeah. And beyond the whole privacy issue, there's also the question of whether this kind of tech-driven lifestyle is even desirable for everyone. I mean, I can see the appeal, don't get me wrong, but would I want to live in a place where AI is managing every aspect of my life from how I get around to what I eat to when I need to see a doctor? It's almost like living in a simulation. Right. It makes you wonder if we're so focused on building the city of the future that we're forgetting about the human element. That's a great point. And I think it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, the importance of finding that balance between progress and preserving what makes us human. Technology can be an incredible tool. But we need to make sure we're using it in a way that benefits everyone, not just creating a utopia for the tech-savvy few. Well said. 
It's easy to get caught up in the glitz and glamour of it all, but at the end of the day, cities are about people. They're about communities, culture, connection, things that can't be engineered or programmed no matter how advanced our technology gets. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. So as we wrap up our deep dive into Neom, I guess the biggest question is, is this the future we want? It's a question without a single answer, of course. Different people have different opinions, but I think the important thing is that we're having this conversation. Neom is a powerful reminder that the future is not preordained. It's something we create through the choices we make today. So true. It's up to us to decide what role we want technology to play in our lives and in the cities of tomorrow. That's all the time we have for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into Neom. It's a project that's sure to spark debate and discussion for years to come.